It's no surprise that shiny metals work well as photon mirrors, but what exotic material could possibly work as an electron mirror? And how did I get these crazy images of the inside of an electron microscope taken by that very same electron microscope, kind of like a camera imaging its own insides? To look into this effect, I'll power on the electron microscope and get some plastic airsoft pellets ready to put inside of it. Turns out any insulator or plastic will do just fine for this. No exotic materials are needed. I'll explain how this electron mirror effect works in a few seconds, but for now just bear with me. Right now I'm loading the Airsoft BB onto a brass stage, which I can insert into the microscope and we can image it. If you want to see more about how the microscope actually works or this sample loading process, I'll link to videos on those topics. The microscope's a big vacuum chamber, so to load the sample in we have to vent it to atmosphere. Pay close attention to what the inside of it looks like, so that in a few seconds when we're looking at distorted and skewed views of the inside of the microscope, you can kind of pick out what is what. A few notable landmarks are the cone in the middle and the snake-shaped object on the right with the mesh or grid in front of it. The cone is called the pull piece, it's where the electrons actually shoot down out of, and the thing on the right with the mesh is the secondary electron detector. It's basically the camera that's actually doing the imaging, and you'll see soon that we can actually image that sensor itself. Alright, the sample's loaded and we can obtain an image like normal with the electron beam. Like I said before, check out my previous videos to see how this actually happens. I'm glossing over so many details right now. I'd like to direct your attention to this highly scientific diagram. There are only two things we need to know to understand this electron mirroring effect. The first is basic electrostatic theory, in which same charges repel and opposite charges attract. The second is that, as the electron microscope operator, you have control over the potential of the beam. So at first, we generate electrons up here, and then fire them down the column at 30,000 volts. Those electrons hit our sample, denoted as the oval here, which charges up to 30,000 volts, because those electrons have nowhere to drain to. This sample's isolated from ground. Then, we abruptly change the beam's potential from 30 kV down to something like 5 or 10 kV. Keep in mind, the electron beam will be attracted to the most positive thing around it. Because the sample is now more negative with respect to the beam, the beam will actually be deflected away and kind of do this U-turn. The most positive thing around the electron beam are the grounded chamber walls. So it does this U-turn, and the electron beam will kind of go everywhere except the sample. Therefore, the sample is reflective to electrons. I have the beam cranked up to 30,000 volts, as high as the machine will go, and the insulator is charging up. This is actually so cool, as I zoom in, you can see little fragments of plastic on the surface of that pellet starting to move around and attract and repel each other as the charge is evenly distributed around the sphere. I drop the beam's potential down to 5 kV, and then after a little knob turning, we can get the expected electron mirror effect. This is really insane. We're able to image the inside of the electron microscope and get these distorted but useful pictures that could be used to inspect the instrument or just to mess around like this. I had a lot of fun moving that plastic pellet around inside the microscope, which changes our field of view and allows the mirror to work on different parts of the inside of the microscope. We can look at all kinds of hardware and springs and gears and things that are moving within there. It's really cool. I came up with this idea on my own, was really excited to try it. After googling it, I had found out that someone had already come up with this and demonstrated it in the 70s. This is almost a daily occurrence for me at this point, but at least it works and it's cool that I get to demonstrate it. I keep calling this an electron mirror, but does it actually flip the image horizontally like a real mirror does? This is not as straightforward as you might think. I'd like to hear your thoughts, so leave a comment, yes, no, sometimes, or maybe you think it's a bad question. This is kind of a fun video, but I hope you still learned something and enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.